Atheist Nomads, episode 80, news for February 5, 2015. The outbreak continues. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin, and joining me as always is Wesley. A little bit stoned, but how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, so yeah, you're on some uh, some fun meds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flexural and uh, some uh, some industrial strength uh, pain relievers, yeah. So, not not stone stone, but, you know, legally stone stoned. Anyways. Yes. Yeah, I, I've, I've been there before. <laughs> Pinched a nerve, I just woke up. Holy shit. Uh, just fucking, that's just weird. How do you wake up and, and have a, you know, pain? Like, it's crazy. Anyways. Slept wrong. <laughs> I guess. Wait. <sighs> So how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, life's good for me. Uh, keeping busy. Uh, mm. Life in, in the state I live in is, well, it's got its share of shittiness right now. Uh, <laughs> the the Add the Words bill had, you know, finally got a hearing in committee. And after three days of testimony, the vast majority of which was in favor of adding the words sexual orientation and gender identity to the Idaho Human Rights Act, the committee along party lines with a seven to four vote or 11 to four vote or something like that, uh, voted to not send it onto the house. Oh. So the bill died. Well, good for them sticking to their, to their guns. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And looking like, uh, the, the fricking faith healing exception bill never got, uh, submitted. Oh shit. So looks like that will be continuing on for at least another year. Holy shit. That's just fucked up. If add the words is any indication, uh, that, that's been getting pushed for 10 years now. <laughs> and it finally actually got submitted, got a bill number and got a hearing. Uh, the, the sad probability is that trying to get rid of faith healing in this state will follow the same shitty, shitty path and take forever. Uh, <sighs> lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, well, I understand uh, you were on a on a show. Yeah, uh, I was just on Zach Relige last night. Uh, looks like he's a YouTube only right now. He said he might turn it into a podcast at some other time, but yeah. Um, if you want to really look at my ugly mug, I'm on <laughs> Zach Relige number four. <laughs> I'm proudly wearing my Seahawks ball cap, though. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I, I it, watched it today. <laughs> painful <laughs> but yeah he seems like a pretty good guy so you know keep on looking out for him he's got some good guests uh, already on there and lined up soon cool cool kind of like well i think you're one of them yeah yeah it's uh be in the next week or two sweet all righty well what do you have for us for history this day in history february 5th 1994 Already, let's backtrack to uh, June 12th, 1963. That's the day that Medgar Evers was gunned down by Byron D. Lebeckwith in front of Medgar's house while his wife, uh, Merle, and their three young children were inside. Man, oh man. Medgar was born and bred Mississippi. Uh, He fought in World War II, and when he came back, he found the same discrimination waiting for him that he knew all of his life. Uh, He graduated from Alcorn uh, College in 1952 and began setting up local chapters for the NAACP. After he was denied entry into the segregated University of Mississippi Law School, he helped the NAACP campaign to get the school desegregated. In 1962, yes, uh, 10 years later, James Meredith became the first black person to attend the University of Mississippi. Uh, For this, Medgar received many death threats during this time. Um, there are also many attempts to kill him. Unfortunately, um, Brandon Beckwith succeeded. Yeah. Beckwith was a fertilizer and 
just a small item salesman for a long time. A uh, also a World War II vet and a KKK member. And yeah, he didn't really try to hide what he did from the from anybody that knew him. And when he got put on trial twice, uh, those good old boy days, Beckwith had two. Yeah, those two trials with all white, all male juries and wasn't convicted in either. <laughs> it wasn't until a third trial in the 90s that a rifle scope with Beckwith's fingerprints was introduced and that, that people were actually willing to speak up against Beckwith in court, that the prosecution was able to get a conviction. Beckwith got life in prison and died in there in 2001. Man, oh man. Interesting side note, <laughs> found out that uh, Brian Dilla Beckwith was... Uh, in 1973, he was helping plan a murder of A.I. Botnik, who was the director of the New Orleans-based uh, Benai Brith Anti-Defamation League. And in re- re- retaliation for those comments that uh, Botnik had made about white Southerners and race relations, uh, Beckwith and some of his friends were planning to bomb and kill some people, inc- including Botnik. Man, oh man. Yeah, uh, thankfully to some tipsters, to the F- FBI, uh, they followed him, and, you know, when they when they thought this was all going to go down, they pulled him over, and guess what they found in his car? Uh, several loaded firearms, a map with the highlighted directions to Botnik's house, and a dynamite time bomb. God damn. <laughs> right? Uh, in August 1st, 1975, Beckwith was convicted of a conspiracy to commit murder, and he served nearly three years in Angola prison in Louisiana from May 77 until his parole in 1980. And just to put some little icing on the cake, just before he entered prison to serve his sentence, Beckwith is ordained by Reverend Dewey, Buddy uh, Tucker, a minister in the Temple Memorial Baptist Church, a Christian identity congregation out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I just found that quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, oh man. What a fuck. Yeah, Beckwith wasn't ashamed to tell people, well, at least his good friends, that he had done it. He, man, just crazy. Mm. Anyways. Oi, oi, oi. Moving on along. This day in history, the year 2012. Uh, this one's really fucked up, too. This is the day that Josh Powell attacked his two sons with a hatchet, then lit his house on fire to kill the three of them. So let's go back to December 2009, when the good Mormons, Josh and Susan, were alive and well, but having marital and financial problems in the state of Utah. And I think it was uh, December 9th. That's the last time anyone saw Susan alive. Yeah. So, uh, man, uh, soon soon after that, calls were made to the police and... You know, they started started an investigation. Josh was never cooperative with the investigation from the start. The police found traces of Susan's blood on the couch, and about a month later, in early January 2010, Josh moved in with his father in Puyallup, Washington, and made public statements that he thought Susan ran away with another guy. Not that that ever panned out. Interestingly and scarily, Josh's father was arrested for multiple counts of voyeurism and child porn, in September of 2011. A judge thought that would be a great time to give the two kids to Susan's parents. (laughs) On to February 1st, 2012, a Washington judge ordered Josh Powell to undergo a psychosexual evaluation, including a polygraph test, before he could regain custody of his boys. Around noon on February 5th, a social worker brought Braden and Charlie to their father's rental home in Graham, Washington, where he had been living following Stephen Powell's arrest for a supervised visit with his, with his kids. Josh let his sons enter into the house, but blocked the social worker from entering. She called 911 and reported smelling gasoline and hearing the boys crying. Moments later, Paula ignited a massive blaze that killed him and his children. Later, it was discovered that he had attacked the boys with a hatchet before starting the fire. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. Authorities determined that Paula had planned the murders in advance, giving away boxes of his children's toys to Goodwill on the weekend of the tragedy. And minutes before setting his house ablaze, he mailed his pastor and several family members with instructions on how to take care of some of his final business. None of the emails mentioned Susan. 
God damn, that's a cold motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, seriously is. <laughs> so that's what I have for history, really. Man, wow. Two cold sons of bitches. <laughs> and so, uh, well, I guess it's time for science. Science. Which starts off with something equally cheery. The uh, measles outbreak uh, has now Yay. passed 100 confirmed cases. Cheer! Yay! Yeah, oh. and it's barely February. <laughs> uh, last year was the, the record in recent time on measles cases at 644, uh, more than half of which were in those Amish communities that, you know, with, with that, that one story we talked about last year. Uh, mm. Yeah, so now we've got, uh, as of Monday, it was 102 confirmed cases uh, in 14 states. Um, California says that they have 91 uh, confirmed cases. Of course, uh, th- those numbers don't quite match up. Uh, so I'm guessing the CDC numbers uh, aren't necessarily including all of California's. Mm. Um, either way, though, it's it's bad. Uh, you know, we're already higher than most years this millennium. Uh, <laughs> we're just a day past. Well, as of recording, we're a couple days into February. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And so this is, has uh, definitely uh, gotten some, some people's attention. Um, President Obama has called on presidents. President Obama has called on parents to actually listen to science and vaccinate their children. Uh, in an interview with NBC News, he said there is every reason to get vaccinated. There aren't reasons to not. Nice. I just want people to know the facts and science and the information. And the fact is that a major success of our civilization is our ability to prevent diseases that in the past have devastated folks and measles is preventable. Uh, to be the anti-Obama, uh, Rand Paul <laughs> uh, came out and said that he thinks that most vaccinations should be voluntary and that they're a good thing, but parents should have some input. And, and I'm, I'm quoting from him, I've heard of many tragic cases of walking, talking, normal children who wound up with profound mental disorders after vaccines. Wow. You know what? Parents should have a choice, whether the kids, you know, get vaccinated in the left arm or the right arm. Yeah. That, that's about the choice. I, I, would say, I would say they should have. Yeah, I'd be willing to grant exceptions to people who remove themselves from society. Nah. I don't even want that. If you have aller- allergies and that's your reason, okay. You know, allergies to the things they make the the the, pen- the uh, vaccinations with, then all right. Pass that. Mandatory. Uh, there's a few other legitimate medical exceptions. Medical exceptions, yes. Yeah, you know, right now uh, there are two states in the country that have uh, no exceptions on childhood vaccinations aside from yeah. medical. Yeah, what was that? West Virginia and um, Mississippi? Mississippi, yes. How crazy is that? <laughs> and Mississippi's vaccination rate is at 99.2%. Yeah, they haven't had a confirmed case of measles since 1992. Goddamn. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> they actually have a, they're trying to pass something that would actually give a religious exemption right now for their state, mm. which is tragic, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in all practicality, if they if they did allow religious exemptions, uh, as those typically get used, uh, it would drop Mississippi from ninety nine point two to probably about ninety eight point seven percent. We can hope that's that, that would still be sufficient. Uh, but anyway, Paul wasn't the only one to spew forth insanity from the mouth. Uh, mm. Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey, a, another presidential hopeful. Uh, said that parents should have a measure of choice in whether or not their children are vaccinated. And uh, his, his staff later uh, issued a statement clarifying that there is no question that children should be vaccinated for diseases like measles. Hmm. It sounds kind of like uh, when when uh, Hope Frankie said that, yeah, a good atheist can go to heaven. Everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, what's kind of weird here, though, is the, the word of reason coming out of the Republican Party was from Ben Carson. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Granted, he is a doctor, so you would think if there's and not you know, Ron Paul he's, or Rand Paul is also a doctor, but he's a ophthalmologist. Uh, ben Carson's a pediatric neurosurgeon. 
And yeah, he came out and said that without question, vaccination should be mandatory for all kids. Wow. Period. Huh. Uh, California is uh, just had a bill introduced uh, that would eliminate their personal beliefs exception. Uh, this is something that uh, a number of states have, have done. Uh, all, all but those those two we mentioned earlier have at least a religious exception. Uh, but there's, I think it's 24 states that also have a personal belief exception. And the, the reasoning behind that is to let the most strongly anti-vaccination people uh, give them an out so they don't petition the government to uh, throw out the, the vaccine requirements. And also to keep non-religious people who are anti-vaccination uh, from being able to claim that the religious are getting unfair privilege by being able to opt out. <laughs> well, now there's two state senators so far have uh, have announced they're they're introducing this legislation. Uh, they'll be the the sponsors. Uh, one of them is a pediatrician, and uh, for, in his words, uh, Senator Richard Pan. Uh, we shouldn't wait for more children to sicken or die before we act. Parents are letting us know our current laws are insufficient to protect their kids. Uh, this this bill, uh, if it was passed, it isn't known if it would allow for religious exceptions to continue. Uh, but at the least, it would uh, keep these personal belief exceptions out. Because the current law only says that if you have one of those, you have to go out and get a, a medical practitioner to sign off on saying that they've counseled you on it. <laughs> medical practitioner, which includes naturopaths. Hmm. Well, and awesome. it's <laughs> helping, but not doing enough. Uh, yeah, it's, this is, is while California is in the middle of its worst measles outbreak in two decades. And two years ago, they had their worst whooping cough outbreak in the last 70 years. Fuck. So it is, it is vitally time that this happens. Uh, this is, frankly, I'd, I'd be afraid to have a child right now with the, with the way these outbreaks are. And, you know, I, I haven't heard of a case of, of measles in Idaho yet, uh, but considering it has made it to Utah, uh, pretty sure that's going to be making its way across the border here pretty soon. Uh, all those, those Mormons in Utah have family here in, in southern Idaho. And the whooping cough outbreak here, last year was was atrocious uh hundreds of kids sick there were a few that died and it's it's a scary time god damn so are you up on your shots yes i am <laughs> all right have you had your your tdap yeah actually yeah yeah this is uh one of those things that everybody needs to have uh you know the the childhood vaccinations are are great but adults do need to continue to get uh get vaccinations uh, that includes the annual flu shot, and the, at least at this point, one time as an adult, the uh, Tdap, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Uh, that's that's different than the standard tetanus booster. Uh, it's a, it includes a, a pertussis or whooping cough booster because they have found once the childhood vaccination rate started to dip, that some adults were starting to get it too. <laughs> adults who had been immunized. Moving on to a bit of a happier one, the New York Attorney General's office uh, has sent letters to GNC, Target, Walmart, and Walgreens, ordering them all to immediately stop selling their store brand supplements like Echinacea, Ginseng, and St. John's Wort. Uh, oh, this that's is, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> this is after an investigation where they're doing DNA testing and found that 79% of these samples that they tested either didn't have any of the ingredients listed on the labels or had other unlisted plant materials. I love this line. It says only 4% of the tested products from Walmart contain plants listed on the product's labels. Holy yeah. shit. Uh, the uh, state attorney general, Eric T. Schneiderman, said mislabeling contamination and false advertising are illegal. They also pose unacceptable risk to New York families, especially those with allergies to hidden ingredients. No shit. Yeah, like that, that study they did out of Canada that we talked about, uh, I think it was about a year ago. Uh, yeah. You know, some of these, at least in that, in that case, they found walnut in some of these. Uh, I'm Yeah, it, it's mild allergy, but I'm fucking allergic to walnuts. I'm moderately allergic to them. 
uh, you know, you start putting walnuts, uh, wheat, stuff like that in there. And when it, when it comes right down to it, uh, you know, mislabeling and contamination are, if you're talking about anything even remotely medical, that's as about as major as you can get. Uh, a, a mislabeled product can kill. Yeah. Hell, for, for, for a good example, uh, a number of years back, Baxter uh, got sued after Dennis Quaid's twins uh, died when they were given... Yeah, this, this was after an accidental overdose of the blood thinner heparin. And these... You know, obviously, this is a very tragic case. Uh, but, but he sued, the, of course, the hospital for the nurse giving the kids the adult version, not the pediatric version. Oh, shit. But he sued Baxter Healthcare Corporation because the labels were too similar. Hmm. That wasn't a case of mislabeling, just less than clearly, less than clear labeling. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that he won that case. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes, he did. So uh, Dennis Quaid has some fucking star power clout behind him. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we're talking about the, the difference here. Uh, the the Heplock, the, the child version they should have gotten, would have been 10 units. Instead, they got the adult version, 10,000 units. Wow. All right. <laughs> Just a thousand-fold increase? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but the, the the whole thing here, you know, that was they were were viewed as being culpable due to easily confused labels. We're talking about a case now where potentially dangerous ingredients aren't listed, and where the labels don't say what's what's in the bottle. I always hate those labels where they say like inactive or inert ingredients are like X percent of whatever it is, and I'm guessing that's not even the case here. So this is so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, inactive or inert ingredients would be common fillers like you have in, say, a pill of Tylenol. Yeah. That's not all acetaminophen. There's, there's filler in there. Oh, yeah. But filler is generally inert. Like, it does nothing. Uh, like, sugar, for example, is a very popular filler. Oh, sure. Those candy-coated Advil taste good. <laughs> But no it, joke. I mean, that's why I won't take gels because I don't have candy on the outside. <laughs> uh, but you know, oh man, it, it's just I, I I'm glad they're they're coming down hard on this because for for far too long the herbal supplement racket has been a a multi billion dollar industry selling crap to people. Oh, they just get a pass for free. I don't understand that unsubstantiatable claims. And, yeah, completely getting away with it. Well, at least in this case, they've got something they can peg them for. I would love to see some similar cases start happening over the rest of the U.S. Because yeah. this is just such an easy case to win. It really is. Uh, now, of course, the uh, on the other side, you have uh, the, the Council for Responsible Nutrition, which is a trade association for dietary supplements. Uh, saying mm-hmm. that the uh, AG office was, quote, or what they did was, quote, a self-serving publicity stunt under the guise of protecting public health. And they questioned the testing methods used in the investigation. And so they didn't give the companies a reasonable opportunity to respond to its concerns. Uh, right. Th- there are cases where you can give people a reasonable opportunity to respond, like when it's a minor infraction. You know, say... The active ingredient was actually only 18%, not 20%. And the filler was 82%, not 80%. You could give people time to respond to a a mislabeling like that. But when it comes to, you're not selling, it's not what it says it is. When when there's only 0% of a thing in the bottle, and there should be at least, you know, 8% of something, (laughs) there's, there's there's a difference between... Nothing of a thing and some of a thing. Mm-hmm. And when you have allergens and stuff that you aren't warning people about, it's also pretty big. You know, it, not one of those things you want to give people time to, to take care of on their own. You, you tell them you got to get this away from customers now. Period. Yeah. Pull that shit off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> 
this fall in Australia, not America. Australia is on the opposite side of the world, the, the bottom half of the equator. From the Atheist Experience, Matt Dillahunty, host of The Thinking Atheist, Seth Andrews, genetically engineered for perfection, Aaron Ra. It's the city of and I just f***ed it all up. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll edit that out. You had one job. It's fine. I, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start off in Sydney on the 13th of March, 2015 at 6 p.m. And on March 18th, we'll be in Brisbane at City Hall. And I just lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be in Melbourne on the 21st of March at 6 p.m. All of us on stage really interacting with the audience. It's going to be a great and fun evening. This is a, a great opportunity for us to come to Australia, meet people, and, and support local groups, and give presentations. And I'm going to be explaining why the Bible is a chronicle of God's failures. But I also want to hear the interaction about the people in their situation and how religion is affecting Australians. I'll be doing show tunes. I'll have backup dancers and a motorcycle ball of death. So it's going to be a fantastic evening for the whole family. The Unholy Trinity Down Under Tour. Proudly sponsored by the Atheist Foundation of Australia. Tickets available at unholytrinitydownunder.com. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to politics and religion. Uh, first off, we've got Oklahoma with a new bill uh, with their, their response to being forced to grant marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Uh, House Bill 1125 would completely separate government away from marriage. Uh, eliminate the state issuing marriage licenses and not allow judges or county officials to perform marriages. It would just be religious officials. Then after the, the certificate is issued by the religious official uh, gets turned into the county clerk, uh, then that can be registered and is a, a recognized marriage. According to its, the bill's sponsor, uh, Representative Todd Russ, uh, put it back to what it was supposed to be and what was originally a holy matrimony and a very solemn and spiritual vow. In a weird way, I'm actually kind of for this. Uh, I have no problems with, you know, you want a marriage in a, you know, let marriage be in a church thing if you want it. If you want it to actually count towards like tax, you know, getting your, filing your taxes together jointly and all that to actually make it a, a civil union, you know what, get it through the get it through the state, but it's not legit until it goes through the state is, or am I just completely way off right now? Well, the way they're wanting to do it, uh, okay. But before going into that, uh, a, a good approach on how to do this. Uh, I don't recall which uh, European country it is that has this, uh, but I'm sure it's not Italy. No, no, no. The state issues civil unions. Uh -huh. And so you go to the courthouse and you get your civil union. That's uh, overseen by a judge or other, state official and that's the legal part yeah that's the only thing that legally matters then if you want to have a religious marriage you can then go over to the church and have a ceremony yeah it's completely separate but the state controls the legal part uh i would be all for something like that now the problem with changing the language on it is it would require a change in federal law and all other state laws to make sure that that civil union would be recognized the same as another state's marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What this bill does is make it so that only the religious, only religious officials can grant people marriage. And the only other alternative is filing a affidavit, uh, claiming a common law marriage. Well, looking at all you pastafarians, you know, get your, you know, start, uh, being able to, Oversee weddings, uh, get that ten dollars certificate saying that you're a, a registered wedding officiant off the internet. Tons of atheists, I'm sure, will be happy to do that. <laughs> uh, the but the the problem here though is it's currently there. There's no method to file an affidavit of common law marriage. Uh, so if this bill were to pass, they would then have to create something that would actually allow for actually getting legal recognition of common law marriage, which Oklahoma law 
does, um, sort of, but there's nothing official about it. And I don't know how that really works for things like inheritance and the federal government. And the biggest problem here is it would create a separate but equal. <laughs> Where have we heard that before? Mm -mm -mm. So you know, if they wanted to do civil unions through the, the, the state and leave marriage up to the religious, go for it. But everybody has to be on equal footing. Yep. And if those married people that went through the church want to file their taxes jointly, then they need to go and get their fucking civil, civil union. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and this isn't Oklahoma is not the only state that's trying this. Uh, there had been some talk at Idaho we talked about a couple months ago um, for somebody wanting to try that. I don't know if that actually happened. Uh, and I've heard Arizona is looking at something similar. And I'm sure there's a handful mm -hmm. of other countries, a handful of other states that are, are doing similar. Uh, but realistically, it's never going to happen. Uh, you want to have people turn on you for destroying the institution of marriage. That's a quick way to get them to turn on you. Uh, so moving along, uh, the state of Georgia has a religious freedom bill, a uh, pretty crazy one that would uh, allow for the state to have to prove a, a very, pass a very high bar uh, for it to enforce any laws against, that, that, that violate your religious beliefs. Uh, mm. This is a, a broad enough one that, and especially since it doesn't even anywhere mention discrimination or homosexuality, uh, this has a, would create a scenario where you could discriminate on grounds of sexual orientation, gender, race, and get away with it because your religion says so. Right. Uh, you could violate the state's anti-marijuana laws if you are past the fair not Pastafarian, Rastafarian, <laughs> uh, because they'd have to make a very good argument for how the state's compelling interest overrides religious beliefs, and, and that would be a hard, uh, hard bar to pass. Uh, this would also make it so that conservative religious people who believe they have a right to beat their wives and children could get away with it. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I highly doubt that you could get away with honor killings, but that would have to conceivably would be permissible. Holy shit. Yeah. The state would have to make a, a compelling case for why they have an interest in making sure that you don't kill another member of your religion that says that you can get away with that. Would this open a door for Sharia courts? If so, it would, they would not have... Actually, yeah, I think it would. Because if we had a, a Sharia court, say, overseeing a divorce, yeah, and then this uh, a Muslim hope, uh, hoping to soon be ex-wife uh, goes to the civil court, but the Sharia court acts first, and they rule in the man's favor, and then the civil court rules next. Or like a Hasidic Jews. I'm sure yeah. there's a couple of them in, down there. Wife wants to get a get, a Jewish divorce then, yeah, man, Rabbi Finkelstein could, you know, totally fuck up the process. Yeah, because huh. that would be then be imposing, uh, you have to make a compelling interest for why the state needs to step in and, and take care of that. <laughs> awesome. It, it's, right, it's a, the right wing is letting Sharia law come to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Fucking A. <laughs> Uh, my, my slightly high ramblings are paying off dividends. <laughs> now, in, in all practicality, the way this would actually be enforced <laughs> would be if the judge thinks that, well, okay, if you're Christian, uh, y you can get away with it. And if you're anything else, you can't, uh, that's how I would, I would presume it would actually be, be handled. Oh, sure. Uh, of course the appeals courts would have a, a Field. easily have a heyday with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All you have to look at for a great example on how a, a very vague law can get handled in appeals, uh, just look at Montana and its speed limit. Mm. They had just reasonable and prudent until there was a disagreement about what speed was reasonable and prudent, and it went all the way to the state Supreme Court, and the state Supreme Court said, that's an arbitrary standard. <laughs> and the officer think, thought that 120 miles per hour was not reasonable and prudent. The driver thought it was. Who's right? 
And so they threw out the state speed limit law, uh, which then briefly meant there was absolutely no speed limit in Montana. And then they actually put one in. Hey, if you got a, a McLaren and you're out there with a car going 120 in a car that could easily double that, sure. Who's to say 120 isn't reasonable and prudent? Depending on the on the road and the the, oh, sure, the sure. conditions, but Montana, say you're out in eastern Montana, it's flat, wide Mont- open. Montana's got some long fucking straight stretches of ground. No hot, no traffic, and you're on the freeway. Oh. And you, yeah. yeah, you're driving a, a car that can handle the speed and has tires that can handle the speed. Yeah, 120 is perfectly reasonable. Yep. <laughs> and moving along to a, a couple of fun ones. Uh, mm. Northern Ireland has a full-time pagan priest, Patrick Carberry. Nice. Mm. He's a former chef, and he's now a, a traditional uh, Celtic shamanic priest. Uh, anyway, mm. there was a statue of the Irish god of the sea, Manananon MacLear. This was stolen and replaced by a wooden cross. With the cross oh, wow. was the words, you shall have no other gods before me. Phenomenon. And so Carberry has claimed that this theft was not just a theft, but it was a hate crime. It, yeah, kind of, sure. Now, granted, for it to be a hate crime, it needs to be, to, you know, part of that, it's to create fear. Uh, don't know if this would really be creating fear, but... Uh, it could. You know, burning crosses from the KKK were considered hate crimes. Oh, definitely. They didn't so, light this one on fire, though, right? No, no. no. Uh, the, the police are investigating the religious element of this theft. Uh, and it's actually caused outrage throughout the, the local community. Um, but it's also brought to light a lot of the persecution and discrimination that uh, pagans in, in Northern Ireland face. Hmm. And along those lines... There I actually is a, really like this one. There is a new temple being built in Iceland. Uh, the first temple for the Norse gods in a thousand years. Hell yeah. I mean, uh, building a shrine to Thor, Odin, and Frigg. Yeah. Oh, come on, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they haven't had a, a Norse temple since uh, the, the Viking era, which came to a, a very uh, sad end. Well, okay, depending on perspective, if you're a big fan of, of uh, pillaging and plundering, uh, it'd be a, a sad end if you're a fan of peace and tranquility. I guess maybe a fitting end. Anyway, it came to an end when uh, they, they got converted to Christianity about a thousand years ago. And uh, But modern uh, Norse paganism has been gaining popularity in Iceland recently. Uh, it's It's tripled in membership in the last decade, and they now have 2,400 members. Uh, that may not seem like a lot, but Iceland has a total population of 330,000. All right. So basically it'd be on par with a mega church in Boise. Really? Boise have about 330K? Uh, if you add in Meridian and like, Eagle, yeah. Wow. Huh. Okay. Uh, Boise metro area is 600,000. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boise proper is 200,000. Huh. Man, yeah. I'd... All right. Boise's got more people than Tacoma. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Huh. Yeah. Uh, passed up uh, Spokane and Tacoma a few years back as the third largest city in the Northwest. Uh, anyway, uh, getting back to the story here. Uh, mm. they, now, they, they, they uh, one of their, their high priests, uh, oh, I, I've got to say this. He's a high priest of Astra Trufergrid. You nailed that. An association that, that promotes faith in the Norse gods. So he says, and his name is Hilmar Orn Hilmarison. Uh, I don't believe anyone believes in a one-eyed man who is riding about on a horse with eight feet. We see the stories as poetic metaphors and the manifestations of the forces of nature and human psychology. Uh, what's really cool, though, is that the temple is going to be circular and be dug four meters down into a hill overlooking the, the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. And it's going to have a dome top that will let the sun in. Hmm. And then, as, and quoting from Hilmarsen, uh, the sun changes the seasons, so we are in a way having the sun paint the space for us. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll be using this, this uh, facility to host uh, weddings and funerals and uh, naming ceremonies for children and initiation ceremonies for teenagers. Hmm. 
And uh, Iceland's neo pagans do celebrate the ancient sacrificial ritual of blot with the music, readings, eating, and drinking. Uh, they do leave out the slaughter. Oh, well, of animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, it sounds like a good old time. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's pretty slick. And finally, uh, this one was was uh, we got we got tipped off on this one uh, directly. Um, uh, there is a Christian uh, radio station in Houston, Texas, KSBJ. Pretty awesome that a Christian station in Texas has BJ call sign. <laughs> uh, but they, they they are going around to public and private schools, uh, recording children as part of a program called Say the Pledge. And this all is part of a uh, campaign that gets published with their logo and a promise that God listens on their website, Facebook page, and on on-air segments, along with only religious programming. Uh, the DJ, as he goes around, wears a uniform with the same logo on it. The microphones, equipment, and van that go along as well all have God listens prominently displayed. And this is all going around to public schools where kids from preschool through the older elementary grades are being subjected to it. Uh, this forces non-Christian children to opt out, uh, and it's a pretty nasty intrusion of, of religion into a public school. Uh, there is uh, FFRF and the American Humanist Association have been notified and have sent letters. Uh, they have not gotten any responses yet. Uh, we were requested to share this uh, petition from change.org. Uh, it's already, at the time of recording, has uh, 1,164 uh, signatures on it. Uh, they're only looking for another 336, uh, but, but I hope we can push it past that. So the link's in the show notes. It's really long, so yeah, go to the show notes, and uh, you'll find the link in there. And that's it for news. I actually had a, a little one I can hope on. Uh, I didn't want to put it into the news because it's not official yet. Oh, but uh, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler, yeah, uh, put out an article on on Wired saying that he's going to basically uh, make internet providers a Title II uh, uh, utility, essentially, which is kind of against what he's always said in the past. But hopefully, we'll get some good regulation in place and faster speeds, better service going pretty soon in the years to come. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those where. He, he was trying to avoid having to go that far, uh, but kind of running out of options. So it's nice to see and definitely yeah. nice to see uh, the FCC coming down on the right side on on uh, net neutrality. I'll say the correct side, but yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, a, a fun little ditty. Uh, the FCC just ruled a few days ago that broadband speeds to be considered broadband had to get uh what was it quintupled? Uh, they went from four megabit download, one megabit upload to twenty five megabit down and uh, three up. Yeah, to be considered broadband. So that's a nice change. Even though I'm sitting on a, it's basically a fifty twelve right now. But yeah, I think I'm. I've got fifty three. Well, mine hits around sixty to eighty down most of the time, but officially fifty twelve. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and move on to feedback and uh, wrap up the show. Uh, first off from Alice via the website, and uh, this was a comment left on episode 78. You mm. boys need to learn some new words. I like swearing too, but your limited vocabulary just makes you sound like idiots. All right. Alice, you gave no suggestions with which to use. Yeah. And also... By all means, teach mm -hmm. me how to cuss. I, I would love some creative <laughs> tips. <laughs> I, I started before the podcast. I was I was blogging and I started out uh, using a decent amount of, of college level language uh, in my blog posts. And I kept get, having people ask me what the words meant. <laughs> yeah. That gets tiresome. Uh, it, it's generally a good idea to not make it so that people have to Google what you say. Uh, in a blog, it's a lot easier. You can just highlight it. And you know, right click and and you know, do a search. Uh, with a podcast, it's a little bit more work to pull up a web browser and, and search for what that word means. And if you're driving, it's going to be a while until you can do that. Uh, oh, sure, but she just wants us to learn new cuss words. 
<laughs> that's all she's talking about. Oh, well, that's possible. Uh, I, instead of instead of goddamn, I'll start saying piss infected cum bubble. I don't know. I'll I'll work on that. Anyway, sticking with the vocabulary part, not assuming she just meant cuss words. Uh, oh, generally, uh, you know, you, you want to communicate at the eighth grade level. Uh, that's the the level that is the most accessible to people. Uh, if you're wanting to be accessible to a general audience, uh, yeah, we want I'm, to be accessible to a general audience. So speaking at something that the average eighth grader can understand. Um, just at that just level, just because I'm a college, just because I'm a a college grad, doesn't mean that you're getting anything past like fifth grade potty humor with me. So <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's enough time on that. Uh, from right. at Zachary Lidge on Twitter. When at oh. Atheist Nomads does an interview, they don't bleep around. Uh, nice get with Dr. Steve in episode 79. Dr. Steve was a great chat, pretty good guy. And man, yeah, visit the uh, uh, um, Skeptic Yule podcast page on Facebook. That's Skeptic U-L-E. You know, if you want to donate to him and his cause and you know, find a, an odd but interesting podcast with three Pauls and sometimes hmm. a Steve. Yeah, and <laughs> and with that, he he reached out to us, mm-hmm. uh, so that was nice. And the chemistry we had was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that, I think that's the quality of some of our listeners, like Steve. Yeah, hi Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there was only one awkward pause the entire time. Yeah, okay. and I have never had to edit out so much of people talking over each other. Yeah, uh, it was just a fun conversation. Yeah, you only get that when there's a people click really well, and so that, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, from at jr three zero four five via Twitter at atheist nomad. Steve made me realize how many people I personally know that have been shot accidentally or otherwise. Too many, right? <laughs> Man, some crazy shit. I'm sorry to hear that. That's uh, it, it can be bad. And uh, from Neil via the website, uh, this is regarding episode 79, uh, outside of the judge getting reversed, the most positive thing that could happen is that Dr. Steve takes his uh, kids to mass using the experience to teach them how wealth, power, and mind control can create an institution like the Catholic Church. I would then have the kids write letters to the judge thanking him for giving them the opportunity to learn what a sham the church is. As I said in the Facebook post regarding this issue, I'm sure the judge would appreciate that. The whole mm-hmm. scenario is the direct result of the attempt to completely automate the, the justice system. The buck no longer stops with anyone as they either pass it on or tell you that their hands are tied. Nobody is allowed to make a decision, so when you get an asshole judge that does take it upon himself to impart his own personal brand of enlightenment, the bureaucracy itself is paralyzed by its own existence. The American legal system is in the exact same place. That's why you can get railroaded by a hyperzealous prosecutor, wind up in prison, and end up staying there for months, even after being completely exonerated. Um, yeah, well said. I want to thank all of you for your feedback. Uh, I think this is the most we've had in one episode in at least quite a while. Um, but you could always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Tweet us at Atheist Nomads. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Or call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. And we definitely appreciate you guys using our Amazon click through so we can get a little bit of scratch and you won't ever notice a difference. Uh, PayPal and Patreon, always awesome. And on that note, I'd like to thank Paul for becoming our new uh, Platinum sponsor. So fucking A, thanks, man. Yeah, it's thank you, much Paul. Much appreciated. Man, you're uh, a badass. We are right now, uh, we've reached the point where most of our support is coming through Patreon, hmm. not PayPal. Okay. But we are sitting at $36 per episode. Uh, we are at episode 80 now and episode 100 is coming up in 20 weeks. That's, that's less than half a year. So we're setting a goal right now. We want to get up to a hundred dollars per episode by episode 100. You got 20 weeks to become a patron and all we're asking is $1 per episode from, from like, you know, we have about 75 other listeners. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, you know, if you guys could just one buck, we'd appreciate it so much. Uh, but, uh, I think I've talked about it before. Once we hit a hundred, I do want to start a Kiva program where we start donating and helping people around the world. So yeah, that'd be, that would be, 
that would be amazing. That would also yeah. give us uh, a little bit of scratch to, uh, well, basically afford hookers and blow and maybe even hit a conference or two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, like one thing I'm looking at is uh, they, they've announced Reason Rally 2. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Next year. Uh, the timing for that will be a couple months after my honeymoon. Oh, nice. I am going to be so freaking broke. <laughs> but if you guys give us money, uh, I, I might be able to have enough set aside to be able to hit up the Reason Rally and then get to see all of you. Yeah. So I, I think my wedding invitation's in the mail, isn't it? Not quite yet. Not quite. But soon. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> We want to thank you all for listening, and we'll be back at you next week uh, with with another interview. Fucking a with uh, a good doctor, Carl Mamer. He's not a doctor, but he's a still <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs>